Hey everybody, welcome back to our Sim Face Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here watching some Simpho Gear XV. We got some comments here today, so let's see what people gotta say. We got just another Josh on the Patreon, uh, watching the episode Penny Dreadful, saying, This episode has another subtle example of the characters growing as Chris enters the fight wielding two pistols, something we haven't seen much of before. She's taking a far more controlled fighting style than we've ever seen from her. She still has access to all of her big guns, but she's overall choosing more careful methods now. The entire fight was pistols, crossbows, and the sniper at the end. No machine guns, no missiles. This ties directly into something she struggled with. With the last two seasons, excessive collateral damage, such as when she accidentally sank the underground laboratory while fighting Veer and Carol, only to find out next season that the laboratory also held a key bit of information needed to discover the truth about Gugnir. She never directly says, I'm choosing to hold back now, but I think the implication is pretty obvious and a great touch. I mean, one would suggest then that it's Maria's fighting style, that she's just copying Maria's fighting style. Minus the whip. Uh, I, I don't know if she's, like, directly copying. She has, like, just used the dual pistols before. Like, I remember, in my mind, seeing it a whole bunch. But obviously, she loves doing all the missiles. I think this is, like, good characterization. It's like, I didn't really care, like, catch on to this, like, as a thing that could be going through her head. I was just like, oh, she's just doing this because that's what she feels like today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the, uh, that's kind of the thing about Simpho Gear, right? That... The the big things are things that you can notice, but they're not such important things to mm -hmm. the to the narrative that you could miss them and really miss something. So like Chris is developing in the background, cool. We didn't notice and we didn't feel like we missed something, but mm -hmm. somebody notices and points it out, and that's just additive. That's cool. It adds to the show. It doesn't take away from something for having being missed. Yeah. It, it's always nice to like be able to look back and see those details, especially if uh, like some of our viewers, this is your like, second or third time watching. It's always good. Uh, also from just another Nosh, Josh, this time responding to the name of the flower is Amalgam. I always hate the fact that the OP spoils the existence of Amalgam, but it's so cool looking that I have to forgive them for wanting to show it off instantly. This fight scene with Hibiki's new sand, Saint Germain, <laughs> is tons of fun to watch. The song that they are singing is Hibiki's character's song from last season, which is such a great touch. The song she used to sing while fighting Saint Germain is the song she now sings when she uses the final gift of Saint Germain, with her joining in the duet. The transformation is exactly what I meant in my comment on episode 1 about how they're fully viewing their Simpho gears as energy now. This new form is quite literally a full transformation of their gear into a defensive barrier, and then a golden transmutation of that barrier into a pure offensive form. You actually see that in action, as Hibiki inside of the golden bubble, like all the others at first, she forms this massive flower which removes the barrier around her, and then that flower forms her new armor. Their Simpho gears were fused with the false robes during the final fight last season, so it makes sense that they are inherited from the same alchemical power uh, from it. I just love how there's no season-long search for the new power-up, as this would be a very logical evolution for most, if not all, of the girls. It's also not a power-up that, the, uh, to the level that the Ignite was compared to the normal gear, as this one has some trade-offs. It's pure offense and no defense, so if they could have gone through uh, and hit a Beaky, then she would have gone down more easily. Not that it's easy to uh, down the lunatic who tanked Carol's magic without transforming a couple of seasons ago. Poor comment. I will also never get tired of that ambush. The girls do their dramatic helicopter drop, go through Hibiki's full transformation, get one line to the song, and then get blown up. It is such a funny concept, on top of being a clever trap by uh, Noble Red. The Dayless end was hinted at in a previous episode when all three first meet up during their fight against Kirika and Shirabe. Millark mentioned that they could use Dayless now and that they were all together and should use it immediately to take them out, but Vanessa said that they were too weak to pull it off. It also fits their theme as antagonists, as it is a very famous maze holding a monster, and it emphasizes the fact that they have very little individual power. What are yeah, your thoughts? Sure, lean into that monster angle a little bit more. 
I think it's a bit weird that now that we consider uh, the Simpho Gears to be energy, that we can just create stands, as I said. <laughs> because, I mean, well, that suggests that it's not actually Saint Germain, which means that's just Hibiki's own thoughts telling her things. Because it's, it's just... It's a parasocial side of the relationship, right? Here's what I re imagine you being more like. <laughs> right, because if it's just energy, if it's just her imagining the energy in a new form, kind of like they do with the, the weapons and everything, then it's just her. Saint Germain's not coming back to, to life. She's <laughs> dead. She's as dead as, I don't know, Fine. Yeah, so, yeah. it's just Hibiki talking to herself. And singing hey, with herself, as it turns out. If I could pull off a duet by imagining another person to do it for me, I would still be bad at singing, but I would also still do it. Well, no, you just imagine someone who's good at singing. <laughs> I'll imagine of myself that is good at singing, project that out, and let them duet with the other projection. Well, you don't even have to do that. You can just project the image over top of yourself. <laughs> There we go. Uh, but yeah, I like the way that we've kind of been like very since the beginning of the show, very slowly making advancements in the way the characters understand how they operate and what they want to do. And like uh, the Ignite stuff was the most obvious, like, here's the big power up thing, which is what we're all used to seeing. But here the girls are just learning more about themselves and then putting it into practice. It's good. It is character development instead of new toy, right? Sure, it's the Eucharists. Hmm. Also, still love the fact of just, why didn't you just shoot him, blow him up with the mine right after the transformation? We made fun of it the entire time, and they did it. I made no fun of it. I thought it was funny as hell. They get it in my heart. <laughs> uh, next comment here, Duskmane Alice from AXC. While the Alchemists don't use Phonic Gain, and thus their song is technically pointless, it's still a great song and my favorite moment. The three of them really aren't bad people. They have taken many lives over the years, but not for malicious reasons. Calixtro singing uh, sounds great here too. Relevant when you remember she's voiced by a male. Uh, let's see. See, it doesn't matter how many people you kill, Griff, so long as you do it for a good reason. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, by the way, Revolution, next Friday, well, we're going to go ahead and start that off. I got Adam Bomb ready to go. Totally <laughs> justifies the entirety of Operation British, am I right? <laughs> uh, I mean, like, we literally saw a point of them, like, being malicious when, like, uh, what what's our main villain called now? Fado, isn't it? I, I don't remember offhand. Uh, when he, like, tells them to just, like, kill the two other people in the room... Uh, and we get that moment with the guy trying to, like, Thanos glove everyone. It's like, they were just going to kill them. I don't know what you're talking about. You, you don't remember when um, they're in the underground base, they have, like, the special artifact. They're like, oh, yeah, kill these two people here. One of them dies immediately trying to run away, and the other one runs the glove, puts it on, and then gets burst into energy. Before that moment, the girls are like, Oh, by the way, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and kill you. We don't care. <laughs> you don't remember AXZ, do you? AXZ do is I. a season ago. You're not I'm talking sorry, about I mean... the same three people. Oh. These are three completely different. <laughs> I thought they were talking about our uh, Noble Red. No, they were talking about Collectors Group. Okay. YouTube isn't at that point yet. That's only Pageron. That's why this is from AXZ. AXZ is from the season called AXZ. Yeah. No, those three were definitely, like, way less malicious. They still rode in on a giant serpent tank, but, like, they... No, they collected the souls of people in in a giant conspiracy plan, didn't they? Well, I mean, they <laughs> about that. tried to ruin one soccer player's career. <laughs> and that pure evil. So, I think that is our comments then. Theta, do you have any thoughts to go over? I don't... You're talking about the wrong shows, Griff. I must be, but... So, let's go ahead and just go over what happened last time on The Name of the Flower is Amalgam. As Fado, that's what his name was. 
Uh, and Noble Red attempt to activate the bracelet of Shem Ha, one of the suited men before, who is about to be killed for his failure, attempts to use it for himself, only to be destroyed by it. With their hideout destroyed by the resulting explosion, Vanessa distracts Hibiki and Muria to uh, uh, help the others escape to a new location, revealing that she and the others want to regain their human bodies. Discovering that Vanessa was planted with a tracking device during the battle, Noble Red lures the Symphogear Gear wielders into a labyrinth to attack them from all sides. However, Hibiki is aided by the spirit of St. Germain inside of her, and granted new power known as Amalgam. Just as Hibiki gains the upper hand and tries to reach out to Vanessa, Song is raided by the Japanese government, who demand that they abort their mission. So, we are now seeing the true power of Bado, the power that no one can stand up against, bureaucracy. If he just red tapes them into the ground, I'm gonna have a good, I'm gonna have a good laugh. Yeah, it's funny. I've been bringing him up since A X Z, when he's been in the opening shots. Mm -hmm. But I only just remembered that who, that's who we're talking about every time we said Fado. I'm like, who the <laughs> fuck is Fado? I do not remember Fado at all. And then you, right, he, you just said, villain. and then you just said he comes in during the shut them down thing. And it's like, oh, that guy. Well, yeah. because I've never referred to him by name. It's always been that old guy. I guess uh, Su um, Subasa's grandpa or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know his name. We we had a whole mo uh, moment there about like uh, how uh, Subasa's room was like always kept clean or whatever. That's a different guy, I think. No, that was a different. Oh yeah, that's her guy. dad. I'm pretty sure. Right, right. Or was it? I don't know. It's been a minute. Still. We we have our shadowy bad guy who is now just the official bad guy, and we're gonna see what he's trying to pull off. What is he gonna do? He's already announced he wants to be God. Um, let's see if we, he can make it happen. The last guy who tried blew up. So, <laughs> well, no, the last guy tried to defend himself by putting mm -hmm. the glove on. Yep. Uh, notably, did not become God. Blew up. <laughs> well, he was trying to become God. He had no idea what the glove did. Hmm. True, true. Uh, so, well, we'll see if Fido has a better shot at it. There's nothing standing between him and just doing that right now, as far as I can tell. Well, locations. I guess location, and maybe, like, there might be some MacGuffin-y stuff he has to do first. He has to actually make himself not explodable, you know? Uh, so you got any thoughts on that, or anything else before we go ahead and begin, Data? I did until a second ago, and now I can't remember. And in that case, let's just go ahead and begin and see if you remember and play. But before we get started, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you watch more shows like this, uncensored and uncut, as well as some really access stuff, you can go ahead and follow us over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. Click the link down below and join the Discord. Maybe, uh, maybe do hit that up that Patreon so we can get uh, Griffin some education lessons. Oh yeah, the mega arms. And we can talk. Because we want friends. <laughs> Just carry one of your teammates under our arm, I love it. Well, not everybody has jetpack feet or wings. Uh, it's like, all right, so we got uh, Superman can fly, Wonder Woman can fly, Flash can drop really fast. Batman, how are you getting there? Well, someone's going to have to carry you. <laughs> well, Batman and Wonder Woman have the same means of flight. Oh, yeah, they both own jets. Yeah. Wonder Woman just, like, learned to fly at some point, didn't she? She just can. Did she, or did she just learn to lay down while flying in her jet? <laughs> 
Look, if Wonder Woman can pilot an invisible jet while also having a sword fight and make it seem like she is not piloting a jet at all, uh, you know what? That just is even more impressive, actually. <laughs> hollow out the fucking Fine. Hollow out the wings of your jet and then just extend your sword arm over the invisible wing of the jet. <laughs> and then the person thinks they're being parried, but in fact they're getting slapped with the wing of a jet that you can't see. It's all been fictitious the entire time. One Foreman isn't strong. She just owns a jet. No, she's strong, too. Don't take, all, all I'm doing is encapsulating <laughs> her existing powers within the framework of her past powers. She can be right, as strong right. as she wants to be. She's, in fact, as strong as Superman, as I understand it. Her Aquaman and Superman are all on the same level. They're on the same level when they're on Earth. When Superman flies out into space, he's becomes immediately stronger. Uh, reminds me of the thing, how many of those Simpho Gear users can just fly? Chris, obviously, I think. Considering but... that they all fall when they jump out of a helicopter, none? Chris has rockets and wings, so... That's propulsion, that's not flight. <laughs> the stereotypical bad guy face. Remember, the bad guys are always bureaucrats. どう見ても同じなんだけど、あの手配を刺激しないの。国連直轄の特殊部隊が野放図に威力行使できるのは、あらかじめその詳細を開示し、日本政府に認可されている部分が大きい。違うかな。So the American government is evil, the Japanese government is evil, but the UN, good guys. I'm kind of down for that. 開示資料にて見かけた覚えがないのだがさて I mean, to be fair, Hibiki turned into a god a couple months ago. I think it's fair to ask, like, what's going on? Just reminds me of when the U.S. government tried to shut down the Stargate project. <laughs> oh yeah, with, like, the, um... The slimy senator guy who keeps being antagonistic to the Stargate crew. <laughs> He doesn't remain slimy the entire time. Oh, he, his core personality remains slimy, I'm pretty sure. He might become more good. <laughs> no. I think you're thinking of somebody else. I must be. I'm talking like... about the character played by John Delancey. This <laughs> こぶしを開く勇気なのに東大元暮らしでありますまさかここ宛てがわれるとは思ってもみなかったぜご裁縫の敵を以来国内における特異災害の後処理は全て私の管理下にあるフラを返せばここは誰も簡単に手が出
But I'm laughing more at the fact that they chose to wear mystical robes in the middle of their science. <laughs> How else are you going to conduct research without the appropriate safety gear? If you're researching magical stuff, you gotta wear the magic robes. この身は特別な血液なくして<笑> Uh, back to the alchemical fight from what season two? Three. Two. Three, yeah, just hanging out in the castle. No noodles for lunch, man? He hasn't been noodles in a while. <laughs> he finally finished lunch. That, that was his character arc. お前の読み通りだ。今回の一件正式な手続きの査察ではあるが、担当職員の中に不明瞭な経歴のものが含まれているようだ。そうか。そして、巧妙に取得されてはいるが、鎌倉の思惑と思識痕跡が見受けられる
For a second, I thought we were getting a full-on filler episode thing. Oh, that's how you win relationships. Break the water comes in. Except that you filled those water guns with your own bath water, so... Last time you took a break and go, went to a fair, there was a terrorist attack. She be a crossin'. I just kind of seem kind of weird that the people who sing for their powers all the time would relax by singing. They, they must clearly enjoy it to some point, otherwise it would probably be the worst job ever for them. Well, Subasa's the only one who made a career of it. you think if they really enjoy it, they'd all have careers in singing. I mean, that's what uh, Hibiki was doing in the first place, right? That's why they were going to the musical school. We have no evidence of that. I mean, that was like a season one thing. Yeah, we have, no, I'm saying we have no evidence that she was going for singing as a career. Oh, I was not really getting into it. <laughs> I mean, they're like middle schoolers. You have chorus in middle school. She didn't tell me about it, which is her point. This is almost the realest argument right here. <laughs> Are you telling me to read their mind, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, the mirror thing. ごめんって言葉ずっと隠してきた。それがきっとその人を困らせてしまうと分かってたから。you remember when this was about Tsubasa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about Miku? Take that job phone right now. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> she said everybody else in the room but Miku. Bringing in the whales now. What is that, like a dollar twenty a minute? <laughs> the rates on the karaoke. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like one to a hundred. Uh, attack eggs, of course. I mean, it's not like the noise have ever been successful outside of season two. Right, right. It it's always funny, like how the the noise always have like the silliest little gimmicks, though. Yeah, but they don't have any winning gimmicks. Well, I mean, like we the only thing we've interpreted about their personality is like the way they end up shaped all the time. That's all we really get from them. I'm just saying that they ne they've never been successful. Mm -hmm. of outside of season two, they are they are the ultimate moves. They are there just to be destroyed. I don't expect the Putties and Power Rangers to ever win either. They do sometimes. When the Power Rangers are depowered, right? That's a twist. 
That's what I'm saying. The Alkanoids haven't depowered a Simpho Gear user since the start of Season 2. They don't even serve as a... Inner Cool in Season 3. No. Because that was where the, um... Uh... The, the Crystal Necklace things again. Ah. Well, that's what I meant then. Not Season 2, Season 3. But I mean, they don't even serve as a good distraction. Ignite bombs, yeah. I don't know, this is uh, giving them something to do, so... I love that their little screen has subtitles, too. You think maybe that uh, portends to the fact that they might be Americans? Maybe. By who? Wait, you don't have to pull a gun on us. God, they are too American for their own good. Yeah. You don't have to walk into the room and point a gun at anybody. Oh, she can become that, like, too invested in my work now. Hey, look, it's a person who's the source of your personal trauma. Or is it somebody is really else and you're just distracted? Yeah, somebody else. Oh, look, you're causing a lot of property damage, is what they exactly didn't want you to do, and you're gonna get that court order revoked. I'm pretty sure none of this place has been evacuated, even, so. No, they were in the middle of evacuation, which is what Sabasa just literally talked about. Reminds me a lot of Polka Dot Man. You know, everything's Polka Dot Dot's mother. Mm -hmm. Polka Dot Man's yeah. mother. It's the goofiest twist in that movie. That's just kind of awesome. It really is. How long until she just sees a normal person as her and kills somebody by accident? Oh, that would be the simplest solution to do, wouldn't it? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> How many people is normal this gonna kill? By that. It's Operation <laughs> British! Uh, no way that was an actual snowman. But this is a metaphor. I don't see why it would be. The show is above metaphor. <laughs> Though I do think she needs to be taken off the force for a little bit. You're a loose cannon, Tsubasa. <laughs> and in your badge and your gun. There's a sticking out the building. You might have caused a bit of damage. Aw, uh, that, that played out perfectly for the Noble Red crew, though. This really does remind me of, like, Season 1 Hibiki rescuing the random kid. Yeah, Miku doesn't have a thing embedded in her chest. Mm. 
Well, I feel like you revealed your hand way too early. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a bit bold of you, man. I mean, unless he's got powers, too. He evolves in a super bureaucrat. Can't believe they had her say that line. Please cut him in half. That is a blood fountain. That is definitely the guy who got cut in half there. Yeah, no, but, no doubt. I mean, obviously, because oh no it's Vanessa evil. who just said we want to be friends thing. Yeah. It's clearly that her changing sides. Mm hmm But yeah, like, and no she wonder needs the them. Just look at that blood pressure. And needs them uh, outside of the HQ, which is why she's also mm -hmm. busting the cameras, so she can let them know that they're changing sides without her own side knowing. Right, right. This is a a fun play. I didn't think we'd be getting the the Cold War symphony gear, you know. <laughs> and of course, Subasa's is not going to be able to live with it. Mm -hmm. Them being uh, on her side is what they did to her, and now her trying to kill everything that looks like that. Our our vampire girl literally is just digging the hole of Subasa's trauma, and is just going to get away with it. <laughs> well, maybe not. That's why I just said that Tsubasa is not going to be able to live with it. I don't know. Maybe it'll be even funnier to anti-climax it. The two just like have to sit at the same lunch hall, like looking at each other, and just go, "Oh yeah, by the way, sorry I killed a civilian in front of you and uh, ruined your life again." <laughs> I don't know. Chris has never said that. Chris wouldn't. <laughs> it's a callback to last episode. If you don't remember. Oh, that's right. No next time ons. Oh, yeah. Still, fun fun little ride there. <sighs> so, if we are getting into this little uh, conspiracy changing of sides arc, uh, at least they're going to figure out who their actual enemy is before we hit the middle of the season. So, that's good. We have, we have time for the turning point to happen. It's always the last three episodes that are the bit crazy bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no one's uh turning into another giant again or anything. Not not for a minute, I'm sure. Uh so Theta, any thoughts you got on the episode? No, I think I spilled it all out there at the end during the credits. Alright then, in that case, let's just go ahead and wrap up for the day. This has been Stoneface Reactions, everybody. Um Griffin, that's Theta, and we will catch you next time. See you around. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?